The Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky tastes better. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky, 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 lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Better get a carton. Better get a carton. Better get a carton today. Hello, friends. This is Don Wilson. You know, that college cheer represents a lot of smoking cheer in campuses all over the country. Yes, indeed. Because a nationwide survey based on actual student interviews in 80 leading colleges reveals that more smokers in these colleges prefer Lucky's than any other cigarette. But that's not all. The survey also shows Lucky's gained far more smokers than the nation's two other principal brands combined. More important still, the reason most often given by the students for smoking Lucky's was Lucky's better taste. Yes, Lucky's do taste better because LS, MFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild, good tasting tobacco. And Lucky's are made better, made round and firm and fully packed to taste cleaner, fresher, smoother. So make your next carton Lucky Strike and you'll agree Lucky's better taste is something to cheer about. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, once every two weeks, Jack Benny and Rochester make out a shopping list of household needs. As we look in on them today, they're preparing this week's list. Say, boss, the shelves are kind of empty. We need some baked beans. Baked beans. Three cans. Some peas? Not so fast, Rochester. I'm writing it down. Peas, two cans. Some mayonnaise. Oh, Rochester, why buy mayonnaise? All it is is eggs, salad oil, and vinegar mixed up. Oh, yeah, I can make that. Yeah. Well, we need some corned beef hash. You don't have to buy that either. All it is is potatoes, corned beef, and onions. Yeah, I can make that too. Yeah. Now, let's see. We need some eggs. Eggs? Well, Rochester... No, boss, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I meant you can get the eggs from the milkman. Now, let's get on with the list. Some bird seed for Polly. Bird seed? By the way, where is that parrot? I don't know. She climbed down from her perch this morning and disappeared. Well, I hope you have all the windows and doors locked. She's been trying to run away from home ever since I bawled her out last week. Well, boss, I think you yelled at her a little too much. Well, she deserved it. If I told her once, I told her a hundred times. I get the morning paper first. <laughs> Silly bird. <laughs> now, come on, let's finish this list. Okay. Uh, a bottle of cooking sherry. A bottle of... Wait a minute, Roddy. We just bought some wine last week. It's all gone, boss. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. You've been using too much in the cooking lately. Why? Well, last night you made some clam chowder with sherry, didn't you? Uh-huh. What about it? Well, I bit into a clam and it bit me back. <laughs> Don't use it in everything from now on. Yes, sir. Well, while I'm down at the market, shall I get anything at the butcher's? Well... I think the only meat we have left is a chicken. Well, let's not think. Let's be sure. I'll look in the refrigerator and see. <laughs> Rochester, look. Polly's in the refrigerator. Come on out, Polly. Come on. Polly, stop crying. <laughs> Polly, control yourself. It's only a chicken. You didn't even know her. <laughs> How'd Polly ever get in the refrigerator anyway? I don't know, boss. She must have jumped in when I had it open. <laughs> I 
I think she's catching cold. Fix her an Alka Seltzer, Rochester. Don't worry so much, boss. Polly will be all right. I don't know. She's getting kind of old, you know, even for a parrot. How old is she? Well, when I bought her, the pet shop gave me her pedigree. The paper said she was born in Algiers in 1894. 1894? Yeah, that makes her 58 years old. I'm 39, 39. <laughs> no. No, no, Polly, it says right here on your pedigree papers, you're 58. 39, 39. <laughs> no, Polly, Polly, you're all mixed up. I'm 39. 58, 58. <laughs> Rochester, put her back on her perch. Yes, sir. I'll answer the door. You finish the list. Okay. Ouch. It's the second time I hit my head against that chandelier. I better take some money out of my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm lucky, my... Coming, coming. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come on in. Mr. Benny, can I miss the rehearsal tomorrow? Oh, sure. Can I miss Saturday's rehearsal, too? Saturday's? Well, I guess so. Can I miss the show on Sunday? <laughs> miss the show? Why? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> oh, stop being silly. I'm not being silly. I already made out my will. Look, Dennis. I'm leaving my brain to Hollywood High School. Dennis. I was going to leave it to Harvard, but they turned it down. Now, cut that out. You're not going to commit suicide. If I don't, the gamblers are going to take me for a ride. A ride? Yeah, I lost a 50 cents on the World Series, and I didn't pay off. Look, Dennis, nobody's going to kill you for only 50 cents. A lot of people say they'll do it for nothing. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, I'm tired of this silly talk. Now, stop worrying, and let me hear the song you're going to do on the show. What is it? Auf Wiedersehen. That means goodbye forever. It does not! <laughs> I'll sing it and don't drive me crazy. Very good. Now, when you sing that number on the show, I want you to be sure... 
Well, there's someone at the door. Don't answer it. Don't answer it. They're coming after me. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Nobody's coming after you. Come in. Hello, Jack. Hi, Jack. Oh, hello, Don. Bob, I didn't expect you. Come on in. Say, Jack, Bob and I are going out to play some golf. We thought maybe you'd like to join us. Gee, I'd love to, but I can't leave the house. I'm expecting a call about a very important picture deal. Who from? Daryl Zanuck. Daryl Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox? Uh-huh. Say, didn't you make a picture at that studio? That's right, Bob. I made a picture for Zanuck in 1941. Gosh, that's only 11 years. He got over it fast. <laughs> Then it's quiet, for heaven's sake. Jack, what's this deal with Zanuck you were talking about? Well, they're making so many pictures based on the lives of entertainers that I thought my biography would make a good movie. So I wrote it up and sent it to Mr. Zanuck. You know, Jack, that should make a wonderful story. You've led such an interesting life. Vaudeville, movies, radio, stage, television. Bob's right, Jack. Do you intend to play the leading role yourself? No, no, that would be too hammy, you know. Uh, we're going to get an actor who's a lot like me in personality, age, habits, and physique. Who are you getting? Errol Flynn. <laughs> and, fellas, it's really going to be a... Uh... Gee, I hate to admit it, but I need one. <laughs> you need what? A hearing aid. I thought you said Errol Flynn. <laughs> well, come on, John. Let's go play golf. Okay. Say, Bob, Bob, you play a lot of golf, don't you? Yeah, and last week I got the greatest thrill in the whole world. It made a hole in one. No kidding. Yep. On the third hole at Bel Air. Gosh, I couldn't wait to get back to the clubhouse and buy drinks for everybody there. Oh, yes, yes, that's the tradition. When mm -hmm. you make a hole in one, you're supposed to buy drinks for everybody. Have you ever made a hole in one? Yes, yes, uh, about two years ago at Hillcrest. Yeah, it's wonderful. Anybody see you do it? Rochester, but I gave him a dollar and he kept his mouth shut. <laughs> It was worth it. <laughs> you know, Jack, I'm sure glad that I came on your show. You are, Bob? Why? Well, I won't make much money, but man, what an education. <laughs> what? Come on, Don, let's go. Okay, so long, Jack. Goodbye, fellas. I wonder what he meant by... Uh... Oh, boss, boss! Yes, Rochester? Mr. Ronald Coleman just called and they're having a big dinner party tonight. Ronald Coleman? Oh, did they invite me? No, he asked us to return their garbage disposal. <laughs> oh, my God. Do we still have their garbage disposal? Uh-huh. You know, it was kind of tough borrowing that, wasn't it? Yeah, I had to go to plumbing school for two months. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, let's try... Save. Maybe that's the phone call I'm waiting for. Hello? Jack Benny speaking. Hello, Jack. This is Daryl Zanuck. <laughs> Gee, I, I've been waiting for your call, Mr. Zanuck. Look, Jack, I'm a busy man. You sent your script over last week, bothered my secretary with dozens of phone calls. I promised to read it, and I did. You did, Mr. Zanuck? You did? What'd you think of it? Well, Jack, that is without a doubt the most awful thing I've read in all my 39 years. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Zanuck, are you 39? When you're the head of a big studio, who's going to argue with you? <laughs> oh, well, Mr. Zanuck, getting back to my biography, I think it would be a tremendous success at the box office. I'm afraid you're wrong, Jack. A biographical picture is much better after the person has passed on. <laughs> but, but I'm in the prime of life. I'll be here a long time. We can wait. <laughs> but I can't wait. I want to make the picture now. Jack, let's face it. I vowed never to have any more business dealings with you since you made the horn blows at midnight. <laughs> but, but what's I got to do with you? I made that for Warner Brothers. That picture hurt every studio. <laughs> what? I can't wait till it gets on television. <laughs> Thank you.
But Mr. Zanuck, I don't want to appear in the picture. I just think my biography would make a great musical. Look at the novel opening, when I'm being born in Waukegan. What other picture ever had a musical scene in a maternity hospital? I think it's corny. <laughs> what? Imagine having the doctor sing, feet up, pat him on the popo. <laughs> Mr. Zanuck, what about when I play my violin? Look, Jack, I don't want any more people from your program working in our studio. We've got Dennis Day over here, and he drives me nuts. <laughs> well, if I worked over there, too, I could keep an eye on Dennis. Jack, I can't discuss this any longer. I'm sending your script back, and that's final. But Mr. Zanuck... Hmm. Thinks he's a big shot because he runs a studio. He can be wrong, too, you know. I think my life story would make a great picture. Especially the scene where... Did you call me, boss? No, no, Rochester. I was talking to myself. What's the matter? Are you upset about something? Yeah. I sent my autobiography to Daryl Zanuck, and he turned it down. Can't understand it. Why, the story of my life would be very interesting. I think so, too. As a matter of fact, I think it would be one of the most exciting pictures that ever hit the screen. You're right. I was going to get Errol Flynn to play Jack Benny. Oh, boss, calm down! <laughs> well, I was. Anyway, Rochester, I'm going to lie down here on the couch for a while. I don't want to be disturbed. I'm going to take my afternoon nap. Would you like something to eat first? No, 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 I'm not hungry. Cover me up with that blanket there, will you, Rochester? Yes, sir. Thanks. You're welcome. I'll go out and shut the door. Okay. Imagine Zanuck saying that story's no good. <coughs> If I were the head of a studio, I'd make that into a picture and show him how wrong he is. I had a chance to buy RKO a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Can't understand why Howard Hughes turned down my offer. After all, he doesn't need money. He has to have his laundry done somewhere. <laughs> if I'd offered him the money, I'd like to be the head of a... Big studio. Jack Benny, executive producer. Make my own biography. My own studio. My own studio. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is George Fisher, your CBS motion picture editor, speaking to you from Hollywood. The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which is breaking all records at the Rivoli Theater in New York, is scheduled to open in the Los Angeles area next Thursday. Oh, here's a flash just handed to me. Howard Hughes sold RKO Pictures today to Jack Benny. The purchase price was $8 million. Mr. Benny paid in cash. <laughs> Now he won't bump his head on that chandelier anymore. <laughs> One of Mr. Benny's first official acts was to appoint Robert Crosby as his assistant. They have started production on a new musical based on the life of Jack Benny. Oh, J.B., J.B. Yes, R.C.? You certainly have a busy day today, J.B. I know. Read me my schedule, R.C. Well, a 10 story conference with N.K., 10.30 meeting with L.B., 11, you look at the rushes with H.C., 11.30, you go to the cutting room with T.M., and at 12, you have lunch with Jack Warner. Who? J.W. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I want you to send the following note to all producers. Starting today, make sure the green in all your Technicolor movies is made out of chlorophyll. We'll have no stinking pictures around here. <laughs> now, who's handling the production on the picture based on my life? D.W. Oh, yes, I'll send for him. Miss Jones, send Don Wilson in immediately. Hello, J.B. Good to see you, D.W. Close the door and come over here to my desk. <laughs> Sit down. Gee, it's a good thing you put your desk in the middle of the office. <laughs> you want to see me, J.B.? Yes, D.W., where have you been? Been talking to L.S. L.S.? 
MFT. LSMFT? Lucky strike means fine tobacco. I know. What were you talking about, D.W.? M.L.E. Who's that? No loose ends. <laughs> oh, what about T and C? T and C? Tear and compare. L-N-F-A-N-H-S-T-B-H-A-D. L-N-F-A-N-H-S-T-B-H-A-D? Let's not forget about no hot spots that burn harsh and dry. You said it. Oh, J.B. Yes, R.C.? I was just talking to C.T.S. C.T.S.? Who's that? Camel's Tomato Soup. <laughs> oh. How does he feel? Mmm, good. <laughs> fine, fine. Now, look, D.W., you know I selected you to produce the biggest epic ever made, the story of my life. I know, and thank you. I want this picture to be perfect, Now, I hope you've been very careful in the casting. Oh, I am. In fact, I've already selected the actress who will play the part of your mother. I'd like to see her. Where is she? Right behind me. Well, move over so I can see her. <laughs> yes, sir. Miss Vaughn, uh, this is Mr. Benny. Hello, Mr. Benny. I'm so terribly happy to know you. <laughs> <laughs> you? You're going to play the part of my mother? I sure am. To think I ran away from home. <laughs> You'll do. And, Chief, you'll never guess who I'm casting to play the part of your father. Never mind. I'll play that part myself. <laughs> now, D.W., I'd like to make some notes for you about this picture. Hmm, this pencil needs sharpening. Where's my office boy? Here I am, Mr. Benny. Good boy, Daryl. I'll teach you the movie business yet. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. Did you read the script on my life story? Yes, sir. Did you like it? Yes, sir. Especially the scene where you leave NBC and sing, When I say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> That's when you say I beg your pardon. <laughs> then I'll come back to you. Fine studio. <laughs> That's a great scene. Now, Daryl, my boy, I'm going to give you a break and let you see how a picture is actually made. Come on, let's walk over to stage three where they're shooting my biography. Thank you, sir. And, Daryl, this picture of mine is going to be as exciting as 20th Century Fox's Snows of Kilimanjaro. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> well, I think it will. Here's stage three. Now, don't make any noise when you're in there, Daryl. The director is very temperamental. Who's directing the picture, sir? That famous European director, Dennis von Schmierkase. <laughs> come on, let's go in. Look, that's von Schmierkase over there waving his hand. Quiet! On the set there. Ach du lieber, what is los here? <laughs> when I say quiet, it's me talking. I want quiet. I want it so quiet that you should hear a pin drop. Oh, Mr. Von Schmierkase. What is los? All these interruptions, interruptions. <laughs> it's only me. I want to know how you're getting along with the picture. Fine, fine. Who's this faker here with the pencil, a writer? <laughs> Now, now, he's my office boy. Yes, my name is Daryl Zanuck. I'm trying to learn the movie business. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Mr. Von Schmierkase, the boy's only trying to learn the business. Yes, tell me, Mr. Von Schmierkase, what was the name of the last picture you made in Germany? Das Trumpeter from Das Kinder und das Haubraten, was hat's geliebt, und auf die Falten zu reiten, verloren, bis dann zu reiten, bis auf die Falten zu reiten. That? That's the title of the picture? Yeah. What does it mean in English? Lassie, come home. <laughs> oh, Miss Vaughn, come here. Here I am, Mr. Von Schmierke. Good. Now, in this next scene we are shooting, you are Chuck Benny's mother. Your husband comes home, he rings the bell, you open the door, and he kisses you like so. <laughs> you take his hat, he kisses you again, like so. <laughs> you give him his newspaper, and once more he kisses you. Before getting his slippers, and again he kisses you. And for no reason at all, he kisses you. And then you say thank you, and he kisses you again. Wait a minute. Wait, I don't remember any scene like that in the script. Quiet, I'm ad libbing. <laughs> Commence shooting the 
the scene. Quiet on the set. Roll him. Hold it. Who knocked over that lamp? I did, sir. Ah, no wonder you're only an office boy. Now listen to me, Zanuck. You get off this set and stay off. You hear me? This is Von Schmierke talking, and you are taking orders from me. Yes, sir. You can ball me out now, but remember, when Benny's dream is over, you'll take orders from me. <laughs> Certainly, you're dreaming. I'm not dreaming. I own this studio. I own it, I tell you. This is my studio, and I'm the boss. I paid $8 million for it. $8 million. Look at me, I'm shorter. The studio's mine, do you hear? Mine, mine, mine. Mine, the studio's mine. Mine, mine. Boss! Mine! Boss, wake up! Huh? Come on, wake up, you're dreaming. Oh, gosh. Then it was a dream after all. What a shame. What do you mean? I didn't get a chance to kiss Mother goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, Rochester, I'll have my dinner now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's an election announcement of special importance. All over, everybody is saying, see you at the polls. And you will be seeing your friends and neighbors at the polls on November 4th where everybody wants to have his say in this important election. That's the American way. So learn all you can about the issues and the candidates. Listen to all the arguments. Talk. Think. And then vote as you please, but vote. See you at the polls. <laughs> that will be back in just a moment. But first... Lucky taste better. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky, 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 lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Better get a carton, better get a carton, better get a carton today. You may not cheer right out loud like that when you first try Lucky's. You may only whisper, ah, Lucky's do taste better. And I'd like to tell you why. Lucky's better taste begins with fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Then, too, Luckies are made better. Round, firm, fully packed to taste cleaner, fresher, smoother. No wonder so many college students are cheering about Lucky's better taste. You see, a recent nationwide survey based on actual student interviews in 80 leading colleges reveals that more smokers in these colleges prefer Lucky's than any other cigarette, and by a wide margin. In addition... Lucky's gained far more smokers than the nation's two other principal brands combined. And the number one reason the students gave for smoking Lucky's was better taste. So enjoy Lucky's better taste yourself. Get a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke. Yes, be happy. Go Lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go Lucky. Go Lucky Strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Mr. Darrell F. Zanik for appearing on my program tonight. And next week... Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Oh, hello, Bob. How do you enjoy your game of golf? Well, I'm still out at the golf club, but a terrible thing happened to me. Can you lend me a dollar? You mean... Yeah, on the seventh hole, and Don Wilson won't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> Well, tell him I'll give him the dollar later. Good night, folks. <laughs> Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.